before I do anything, I have to come up with an idea of what I want to talk about. This part is by far the easiest. I have a pretty bulked out bank of video ideas. So at this point, the struggle is less about thinking of good ideas, but more that I can't get around to everything I want to, as some ideas are time sensitive, or I just lose interest in them. Number two. So say I chose to do something on Zelda, as I did last week. I'd first watch a few playthroughs of the game, as I usually need an idea of what I'm gonna say during the review. That might require me to do something specific while I play the game myself. Then I just sit and play the game, recording it with a game capturing device. There's a bunch that could work, but the one I use is an Elgato HD. Just because it was cheap, and it, it's an older generation model that was made with AV compatibility, which the newer ones aren't. This is basically the only device I needed to get before I could make the kind of videos such as this one here. Just about everything else I already had on me. The setup is essentially this. The AV cords from the Nintendo that typically feed into the TV are instead fed into an AV to HDMI converter and upscaler. It claims to upscale the videos anyway. From there, an HDMI cable connects to the Elgato, which sends it both to the TV and to my laptop, which acts as its power supply. Because I have a total of two gigabytes available on my laptop, the video is instead streamed to an external hard drive, which definitely doesn't overheat it or anything. Step three, writing and editing the script. I know many people don't use scripts, but I find it super unnatural to try and have a conversation with just myself. It's a lot easier for me to just read from a pre-existing word than try and come up with it as I'm speaking and have it sound natural or even coherent. Besides, this way I can ensure that everything is worded exactly the way I want it to be and it's all said in the best way possible. I usually write a rough draft in my journal and then type up a revised version. After those revisions are made, I separate the paragraphs into several sentence long chunks so that it's easier to deliver when I speak all of which takes about a day or two. So then by Wednesday, I can start step four, making the thumbnail. I use a small portable tablet on my laptop to digitally paint or photo bash the thumbnail. But because the pen with the tablet isn't all that precise, I draw and ink the line art on paper and scan it so it can be filled in Photoshop. It takes several hours to do this, not because it should, but because I'm a terribly slow artist. I think it's because it takes me a while to make any concrete decision on what looks good or not. I try to find a reasonable balance between being critical and being grounded in my abilities. There's no reason to beat yourself up if you can't nail the look you were going for on the first try, in my opinion. As far as my style goes, I've been trying to depend less on details and more on line work, trying to get my characters to be more bouncy, expressionate, and weighted. Step 5. I record the script. Because I don't have a mic, I use my phone instead, recording my script in short segments on the Memos app of my iPhone. Because the sound quality is pretty bad if you just talk into it, I excavated my closet into a makeshift recording studio by hanging blankets and pillows up on every side. This is important because I'm currently living in New York, where it's extra noisy with blaring car horns and alarms and people yelling and sirens and the incessant rumbling of trains and all of that. I usually record my entire script twice, as it takes me a bit to get into the recording mode, I guess. And I usually have this done by Thursday. Step 6. This is where a lot of the fun of making videos dies hard. I transfer all of the sound segments from my phone to my hard drive, plop them into Premiere where I cut out all of the blank spaces and mistakes I made while recording. It's extremely tedious and just really boring, and it takes a long time too. I suppose this is also a good enough time to discuss the organization scheme I use. Basically, I have a folder that contains everything YouTube related to it. Within this folder are a bunch of other folders, each one for a kind of file type or asset. For example, all of my Photoshop files for every project go under the Photoshop folder. Same for Premiere and the audio files and so on. While this setup does reduce the number of folders I have to go through, and it's really effective at creating a bank of resources, I 
gotta admit, I kind of wish I just did it the normal way and just created this same folder structure for every project I did. It would just be a lot neater that way, and plus backing up projects would be way easier. As it is now, I go into every folder and drag the new files onto a secondary external hard drive into an exact duplicate of my first hard drive's folder path. Then I edit the video. Just import game footage and splice it together according to what makes sense to the audio. This part is also super slow. There's basically two parts to video editing, the basic rough cut, and then the part where you add in all the funny bits and the ambient music and whatnot. Speaking of music, I usually have the music track to about negative 30 decibels and the footage to about negative 40. Sometimes, but not all times. I add a bit of a bass boost to my voice and dampen the reverb and noise and wet output levels just to try and make my voice cut above the mix and have it sound airtight and whatnot. The only music I trust is old video game music, which is convenient for the Legend of Zelda videos for obvious reasons. Mostly because just about anything else gets insta-claimed by these corporations that YouTube lets just walk all over the site. Step 9. Rendering. This is where the problem of using a laptop to do video editing becomes really evident. Basically, Jabu Jabu's belly analysis took about two hours to render, which is just stupid. Most of my videos before this have literally taken more than six hours to render. I've really scaled back on my editing and cut After Effects out of the picture entirely which I once used to create animated environments, but it was just way too hard on my poor little machine. And what sucks is that since the playback during editing is so small and laggy, I tend to miss a lot of editing errors that I can only see once the video is fully rendered, which means I often have to render my videos twice. Step 10. Once literally everything is done, I upload it. It usually takes YouTube around 30 minutes to process a video, so during that time, I write all the tags and description and promote it everywhere. I then give it a scheduled release, which at the moment, I'm going for Mondays at 12pm, so I don't have to manually upload it when I want it to go live, because I'm usually working around then. So, I know that sounded like a lot, but trust me, it really is all made worthwhile once I see those 4 likes and a watch time of around a whole minute. But seriously though. I felt like making this video because I'm kind of nostalgic right now. I'm back in New York, where I was last summer, living in the same apartment and working at the same job, which I get to by taking the same subway route and walking the same streets. My work, routine, and priorities are all exactly the same as they were last summer, which were vastly different than during the school year. After living away all year, coming back to the same place just kind of made me feel like the whole school year just didn't happen. I don't know, it's a strange feeling. So I guess I just wanted to give an idea of where I'm at and how I make these things to anybody who might be curious.